G'day, it's Dan from Certified Energy Solutions here. Now today's live demonstration is to show you how to operate and configure your emergency backup generator with a SIG install off-grid solution. Now today's customer we're looking at here, we can see some live data from their MySIGIN app and I'm about 30 kilometers away from site so we're doing this completely remotely which is something you actually have the capability of doing as well. Now, their house is currently showing 1.2 kilowatts of solar generation because their home is consuming 1.2 kilowatts. So essentially their battery capacity is sitting at 100% state of charge and in standby mode, just ready to kind of help out with those loads if it exceeds what the solar can ramp up to. And we can see this as live data as it's just jumped up to 1.7 kilowatts of generation to help with the increased load inside the house. Now, you'll see on your application, which is going to be the same on your mobile phone, the top right hand side will have a tab called device if you follow my click prompts here we click on device it'll show your inverter and battery capacity and if we go down here to the bottom so scroll all the way down you'll see there's a generator and it's currently sitting in auto start mode now this utilizes a two wire start trigger into your automatically operated generator which allows the sig store system to essentially call the generator if it needs help charging the battery system if the solar is underperforming during extended poor weather conditions, or if you simply consume more power through the night than you normally would, and your battery capacity is restricted. Now, we can go into this auto start generator by simply clicking on the tab, and we'll see the real time information is all zeroed out, simply because the generator is not currently running on that location. Now, if we wanted to, for example, simulate a situation where it's been miserable weather for two days straight, you're at four o'clock in the afternoon, your battery capacity is sitting at around about 20% and you're going into the night. So you know that generator is going to automatically kick on whatever that predetermined auto start trigger is set on, potentially while you're sleeping. Now, if you wanted to override that and force charge your battery system so you can run it, you know, during the time where it's not going to be an annoyance, we can simply go up to the top three dots on the right hand side, click on that. And it's currently on two wire start and we can see operational mode which is the second drop down menu. If we click on operational mode, we can change that from auto to manual operation. And then it's essential that we press save on the top right hand side. Now, once that's saved, we can simply go back to the generator itself and this will update in a second. It'll pop up with manual control now with a start button. Now, if we wanted to fire up that generator, we could simply press that start button and then do you want to confirm power on? Yes, we do. We press confirm. Of course, the customer knows we're doing this, so they don't think their systems become possessed. And then if we wait for a sec, you'll see all that voltage information pop up on the system. Now, if we look down below phase A voltage, phase A current, voltage frequency, and then look at active power. Now, if the system doesn't need to actually receive any power from the generator, this figure will often be in a negative point or close to zero. If the system can take the generator power input, that kilowatt active power will actually start showing in kilowatt increments. So it'll be 1000 watts or you know one kilowatt, two kilowatt and so forth, depending on the size of the generator and its setting for its input. Now, if we wanted to shut this down, we could essentially press the off button and then confirm the power down, yes. And then in a couple of seconds, we will see this return back to a zero default on the right hand side as it ramps off. There we go, it's about to zero now. There you go. So that generator is now turned off on that particular site. Now it's really important once you do a force charge in your battery system that you remember to go up into your settings on the three dots on the top right hand side, go back to operating mode and simply hit auto and then hit save. Now we will see, if we go back now to our generator with that top back left button, it'll be back on automatic start mode. That's a really important step to always remember to hit save before you return, so it actually takes that setting on board. Now if we wanted to change some parameters here, we can go into those three dots on the top right hand side once more, and then wait for our menu to load. Now we can see here in op generator parameters, We've got our generator rating for the load. So this will be based on the size of the generator and its output capabilities. Okay, and I recommend not tampering with your maximum and minimum power duty cycle as the installer will generally always do this for you. 
based on that particular generator. And we'll see down the bottom here, this is a setting that you can essentially change yourself. So battery charging cutoff, SOC for generators. So obviously the way this is set up currently, the generator will basically turn off once that battery gets up to 80% SOC, stands for state of charge. So it won't bring that battery capacity up to 100% and then turn off, and that's about minimizing the generator run time so it doesn't run longer than it has to. Now you can delete this setting and change that to 100% if you like, so it will go all the way up to a full state of charge and then shut off automatically. But we'll just drop this back down to 80%. And just remember, any setting you do change in this application, you have to remember to hit the top right save. Now, obviously, we haven't made any changes, so it didn't need to save that. Now, when we scroll down on this system here, we can see load condition. Now, load condition here, what this means is if we enable that feature in the application, if your power draw exceeds what the inverter capacity is rated for, in this particular case, this customer has a six kilowatt or 6,000 watt uh, SIG and store inverter on their particular home. So let's say, for example, you've got an 8,000 watt load. In that situation, this system would simply trip after it sustained a surge load above its six kilowatts for a period of time. Now, if we set in here, six kilowatts, which is the inverter maximum rating, that means that if your load ever hits the peak power draw of what that inverter is capable of putting out, the generator will then fire up with that two-wire signal and auto start, and it'll essentially help with the load to distribute the power draw between the generator, the inverter, and the battery, and this will save a trip condition from actually occurring. So you could essentially draw 11,000 watts from that particular site with a six kilowatt inverter, and the generator is going to do the heavy lifting for the balance of the power. Now, once you've finished using those power hungry devices, your power consumption will drop. And we generally set this generator stop total load power threshold to a kilowatt under the inverter rating. So once again, six kilowatt inverter, a five kilowatt shutoff point. If you've got a 10 kilowatt inverter, then your start load total power will be 10 kilowatts or 10, and then your shutoff will be nine. So that's essentially how you configure. So just keep in mind that it's gonna be based on the inverter capacity you've got on that particular site. Now, we've got our time of use controls down here. So essentially what that's going to let you do is essentially control when that generator can start and stop. So you can say, for example, we only ever want the generator to be able to run from say 6 a.m. in the morning and hit save. Oh yeah, we have gotta go up here and change this. That's already on six. So we'll bump this forward to, we'll let the generator run up to say 1700. And then we can change this to 6 a.m. in the morning. And what that means is the generator won't be able to run in the early hours in the morning and then wake up the family. So again, that's a pretty cool setting that you can actually set. And we can also select if we want that to be Monday through Sunday by simply sliding that menu, selecting all or ticking partial days. Now, down here for the auto start with this time of use rule, we currently have this particular customer's site set up. So if the battery capacity hits 30%, the generator will automatically fire up. That generator will then run until it gets to 80% at 100% power duty cycle. So these are the two figures here that you can configure as the end user. So you can set to obviously your requirements and we can up that to 100% if we like. 80% is generally the standard. And then we hit done, press our save up the top right hand side, setting saved, there we go. So now your generator is configured to run within your time schedule. The load condition or the generator assist is set up to work correctly with your inverter size and pairing. And all of our other information and operating mode is set back to automatic so it's hands-free operation and you're essentially done with your generator settings. So you can change that as time goes on. Now, the one last thing to cover in this tutorial will be the exercise feature. So we can essentially enable this. Now, what this means is we can tell the generator if it's not being used very often, which is bad for generators, we can tell it to fire up for a 10 minute period right there at an interval. So we can go once a week, we can pick our day. Let's say we just want it to run on Wednesday once a week for 10 minutes and we can tell it start time. So we can basically say, okay, well, it's gonna be 
a little bit less annoying if it fires up at 11 a.m. in the morning and hit save. So that will then automatically fire up that generator every single Wednesday at 11 o'clock and run for a period of 10 minutes. So that's really good to keep your generator lubricated up and make sure it's always there in the background ready to go. So that ends our first training session with the MySigan app for an off-grid system with generator integration and how to navigate that software. Now, if you have any other questions, please comment on the video and we'll be sure to cover that with future releases. Thank you.